Hi everyone, it's Matt. This time on the Ink Spot, we're going to be talking about an ink from Diamine. This is Diamine Autumn Oak. This is a fairly new ink, I believe, um, made in the UK. And uh, lovely color. I really like this a lot. And because I've got a gigantic oak tree, just literally right outside this window, and, uh, and it's fall and it's the autumn here, I figured now's a good time to do the review. Now, granted, when you're watching this, it won't be autumn, but it is autumn when I'm recording it. So as is often the case, Diamine's bottles leave a little to be desired. Uh, they're very functional. I just don't find them particularly attractive. Uh, so if you're a bottle person, obviously, mm, meh, whatever. Um, but that's not what it's about. It's about the ink. And the ink in this is just this lovely kind of dark amber orangey color that's just so desperately reminiscent of autumn. Um, really, really like the ink. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to go ahead and do is do a quick writing sample on Rhodia paper. I'll just do the quick brown fox. Uh, actually, no, I think I'll just write the name of the pen I'm using. That'll be easier. So you can see how it goes down. Then I'm going to go through the full review that I did a little earlier. So uh, actually, let's start with the fine nib. This is the Sailor 1911 Large. And this is technically a medium fine nib, but in, since I'm, the rest of the pens I'm using are European, this is going to stand in for a fine European nib. Uh, nice, you can see, nice orange color, really nice shading here. Um, performs well, no bleed through, anything like that. So really quite lovely. Uh, the next is one of my least favorite pens, but the one I use for all of my ink reviews because I'm a glutton for punishment the Lamy Vista, and this is a medium nib. This is a much drier pen, so you can see here on this pen it's going to be uh, a little less shady. Uh, you know, you're going to get less shading, a slightly lighter color. I find this is an ink that really enjoys a wet pen, which you will see in my Lamy All-Star here. This is a much wetter pen. This is a broad nib. So you can see uh, this ink's got a lot of personality. The way I put this in one of my reviews that I was doing a little earlier is this ink feels like what Apache Sunset would be if it was a grown up. Um, it's got a lot of the same characteristics as Apache Sunset, but it's a little more saturated, a little less, a little more muted and less like glaringly bright which for me, I just love. I, I like Apache Sunset. It's fine. It's just a little too in your face um, for, for my tastes. This is the Monteverde Invincia Nighthawk Deluxe, blah, 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 blah. It's the uh, old Goulet exclusive that isn't being made anymore. Um, and that's a 1.1 millimeter stub. Much wetter pen, so you can see in a super wet pen what you're going to get there. And then the last one, I'm going to need to dip here because I'm I didn't ink up this pen. I'll just dip that here shortly. And this is a Twisby back 700 and a 1.5 millimeter stub. So you can see, just based on these five inks, you can get pretty wildly different effects. You've got a dry pen here in the Lamy Vista. You'll get some good shading, but it'll be a much lighter color um, versus, you know, these which are kind of a moderate wetness pen. Just spectacular shading. Nice dark orangey amber colors down toward the bottom, and uh, and then you can see here and the Invincia, the Monteverde, it's a really wet pen. So you're going to get almost a flat uh, kind of, well, autumn orange. It's not really pumpkin orange. It's, it's darker, a little more muted than that. So there's a bit of a brown undertone here in the ink colors. So now that I've shown you some writing, let me go through and, and give you an example of, of what's the components in the ink. So this is my photography 
uh, that I did here. And uh, you can see I put the ink here and then let the water soak its way up. This is actually a, a largely, um, it, it's, it's a much more homogeneous ink than a lot of other inks I've come across. You get some nice deep red and maroons right here at the edge and, and some kind of pale oranges down here. But, but it's not, you don't get the wide swath of colors that you will sometimes get in other uh, photographies that I'm doing here. And uh, it, yeah, it's, it's some really lovely colors. I, I love autumn. Autumn's probably my favorite time of year. And uh, aside from the fact that it's about to start raining all the time, because I live in Seattle. So let me walk you through. I did three writing tests here. I'm going to walk you through each of these and kind of show you how it, how it works. Um, this is the Rhodia paper, 80 GSM. So uh, actually pretty good dry times for Rhodia. It's only, it was only, it was almost dry at 10 and completely dry at 15, which on Rhodia paper is actually pretty good. Um, no bleed through. I like the color a lot. No feathering. Good, but not great lubrication. Again, same with the saturation. That, to me, really depends more on the, the wetness of the pen. The ink itself is not saturated unless it's really wet. Um, great shading. Probably one of the best shading inks I've seen outside of Apache Sunset. No sheen to speak of. I couldn't really find any sheen on this. Um, and very, very little show through. In terms of the multi-pass or shading test, you can see this is quite a shader, and there's, there's some pretty substantial differentiation here. Um, unfortunately, there's almost no, and uh, for all intents and purposes, there is no water resistance on Rhodia paper here. It just, it washes right off. Uh, the next paper is a cream-colored paper. This is uh, my Tomoe River paper, 52 GSM. Uh, longer dry times, but again, this is still pretty good for Tomoe River. The whole point of Tomoe River is that the ink doesn't absorb. It kind of sits on the surface and sheens like crazy. So if an ink has sheen, you'll find it on this paper. And unfortunately, I don't. Still don't find much sheen on this paper. No bleed through. Uh, I like the color just as much on the cream paper as I do on the white paper. Uh, no feathering. Slightly better lubrication. Lubrication. It's really the, the, the effect of the paper, not of the ink, I think, in this case. Uh, saturation is about the same really good shading. I still don't see any sheen and very little show through. And on this paper, and I don't know if you can see it here, very little show through is actually, you know, you can do a better job of seeing the paper underneath than you can the ink that's written on it. Because Tomoe River is very thin, so you get a fair bit of show through most of the time. Now on to the cheap copy paper. And unfortunately, this is where the ink kind of falls apart for me. So this is the uh, the Staples 75 GSM or 20 pound bottom of the rung copy paper. There is no shading on this paper. There's just absolutely no shading. Um, you'll notice the dry times are actually really good. This, this ink soaks right in and it's in. So even at two seconds, there was nothing to, nothing to get here. Um, in terms of bleed through, that's, uh, it's not good. It's just not good at all. Uh, it's not, I mean, you can see this right here is the fine nib. That's the medium nib. That's the broad. This is the first pass, second pass, third pass of the multi-pass test. Even when I put water in, that bled through. So this is not a great ink if you want to avoid bleed through. Um, color is less vibrant, less enjoyable. It's, it's kind of dull and a little more brownish on this paper than it is on the other papers. Feathering, it feathers some, not a whole, not terribly, but you can look at the photos on penhabit.com and see the specifics. Saturation, it's still fairly, fairly saturated. Lubrication, it's, eh, you know, it's still fairly lubricated. Shading drops way down. There's just not as anywhere near as much shading on this paper as there is on the others. No sheen and show through is pretty bad, but that's honestly because there's so much bleed that the show through has to be bad along with it. Um, it is slightly more water resistant here, but I think that's because it just soaks right through the paper. <laughs> that has more to do with why it's water resistant than the ink actually being water resistant. So 
All in all, for me, ink, water resistance isn't a big deal. Dry times aren't generally a big deal. Uh, I, I miss the fact that there's no sheen. I wish there was some sheen on this ink. A nice gold sheen would go along beautifully with it. Um, but I can understand you can't have sheen on every ink. And that might have thrown the color off because the gold isn't so similar to the same color family. Um, but in terms of orange inks, this is my favorite. It's my favorite orange ink I've ever used uh, because it is what I consider to be usable. It's not so bright or so light that it couldn't be used for, day, for writing a letter. You know, I've got uh, saffron, um, the Karandash Colors of the Earth saffron, which I like. Uh, I've got Apache Sunset, which I find to be too light and a little too garish in color. Other comparables might be Diamine Pumpkin. Uh, this is a little darker and more muted than Diamine Pumpkin, but still with that saturated orange color with maybe a little more brown in it. Um, Sailor Gentle Apricot, the discontinued gentle, gentle Apricot, Apricot, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, is a little light for my tastes. I have uh, Deatramentous Yellow Ochre, which is way too light for my taste, more on the yellow brown side than the orange brown side. So in terms of an orange ink, this is it for me. I like this ink a lot. So to see the rest of the photos of the, of the writing test, go ahead and head over to penhabit.com. The link will be down in the, com, the description below, and you can join the conversation over there. Let us know if you have any thoughts about this ink, and we will see you here next time on the Ink Spot from the Pen Habit. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.